All right, so next we're gonna wire in the docking hatch. So if we remove walls, we can see the two toggle signals in are on these AND gates on the end. So I'm gonna delete the labels, go into wiring mode. We'll start with the first AND gate, and we're gonna attach signal in one to toggle docking down here on the terminal. So we'll grab another blue cable, toggle docking over to this bottom AND gate, it's signal in one. And then we can route these cables properly. So that it's not just all over the place. And there we go. So that's the docking hatch wired up, and that should be good to go now. So the next thing is hatches and doors. So the way that doors are set up, in the item assemblies they have the automatic door uh, that opens up and is supposed to close after 10 seconds and they've got uh, auto hatches that are supposed to close if they detect no movement near them. Uh, but they didn't have anything that would open whenever you walk up to it and close properly behind you. Uh, at least not in the prefabs. So what I've got here is an auto door with buttons. Its base is just a uh, door with buttons here. And then wired and then sitting above it is a motion detector. And then these components. So the way this works is if we grab the motion detector we have the output set to 1 and the false output set to 0. So if there's nobody in this region here, it'll set the output to zero. And then the detect range is set here. So the you can modify those settings here. If we set that to 7,700, it clearly gets bigger, but I have it set to 60. So that's 30 on either side of the door. And then 100 down for the height of the door. And then a negative 100 offset uh, so that it sits at the base of the motion detector because we don't care about whatever's above it. So the way this is wired, the motion detector goes to an AND component, a delay, and a NOT component. And then the, d the door receives its set states from the two AND components, and a state out goes to the NOT component. So basically the way this works is if we head to our first AND component, it's waiting for the motion detector and the signal from this NOT component to both be a 1 before it sets the state on the door. So this not component takes in the state from the door. So what that means is if the door is open and the motion detector if the motion detector detects someone and the door isn't open, then it'll open the door. The other way is the not component from the motion detector. So if it doesn't detect anybody uh, and the delay has gone through, and I believe the delay is set to four seconds. Yeah, right here the delay is four seconds. So if the motion detector doesn't detect anybody and it's been a four second delay, it'll close the door. So this thing I have set as a assembly down here. And the way you do that is once you've got it set up the way you want and you select the entire thing, you can save as item assembly. And so one more time, in case you want to replicate this, the motion detector goes to the AND at the top left, the delay next to it, and then the not component right below that. So to follow the first path, this AND component takes in, motion takes in the motion detector, a not component, and goes out to the door. That not component takes in the state out of the door, and then goes to the AND. The other AND takes in a not component right there, and from the delay. The delay takes a motion detector signal, as does this not component, and then they both run to the AND, which will set the state of the door. And this AND is closing the door, this one is opening the door. Once you've got the item assembly, you can come down to everywhere you've got doors, and then delete them, and just place an auto door with buttons. Like that. And then if we go over to gaps, you can see it automatically adjusts the gap. And then for hatches, uh, 
The same thing can be done just in auto hatch with buttons, which I've got here. It's the same exact setup on the wiring. The only difference is the motion detect the motion detector is set to this region here. It doesn't come over all the way because it only has to detect uh, when you're on the ladder, which comes up through the middle. Other than that, it's entirely the same. And again, you can just delete the placeholder hatches we placed, put in an auto hatch with buttons, and we can see that uh, the gap is automatically adjusted. So I'm going to go ahead and replace the hatches and doors on this ship, and then I'll be back. All right, so I added the ladders where I had originally forgotten them, right here and right here. And then on the armory door, I didn't actually make this an auto door. I just left it as a hatch with buttons. And then what you can do here is in the picked required section, you can change this to be ID underscore security, ID underscore captain. So that the only people who will be able to open this are the people whose IDs you set as security and captain. Uh, and then over here on the airlock, we can set this to be a button door, which means the only way it can be opened is by clicking these specific buttons. And the same thing with this hatch, make it a button hatch. Hatch with buttons. There we go. Hatch with buttons. The auto, the auto hatch that closes after 10 seconds will work. So we'll move that into place with the arrow keys. And then the benefit of making this a button door is that you don't want this to open and flood the rest of the ship. You want to w people who are coming in to wait until this drains of water. So we can leverage our little water detector here. So if we spawn an AND component right here, and we want to give it... We only want this to allow the door to open if there's been if there's no water. So the water detector sends out a zero when there's no water, and we want that to become a one. So we'll use a not component for that. So we hop into our water detector, have it send a signal out to this not component, and have this run to the and component. And now instead of this button sending a signal to the door, we're going to have it send a signal to the AND component. And then the AND component will send the signal out to the door, which will go to toggle state. So this way, only if the water detector is outputting a zero, which means no water, and the button is pressed, will the door open. So it forces people to wait for the water to drain before they can open the door, which keeps things from getting messy in the rest of the ship. So we'll just... adjust the wire in a little bit here. Straighten things out. Like that, and then we'll grab that signal and drag it down there. And there you go. So now this will function as an actual airlock. All right, so the next thing is lighting. So if we hit the lighting tab, the entire ship is dark. So you've got a few options with lighting. The first option is powered lighting, uh, which will require it to be connected to junction boxes. And we have limited fan out there. Most of these are full. We have one slot on this one, and then three, three there, two here, and three there. Four, seven, so we have nine possible lights that we can hook up. And then our other option is emergency lights. Emergency lights don't require any power. So if we drop one here into the light slot on this locker, and then uh, go back into lighting, we can see they're not very bright. So the option you can go in and modify their range, set it to 800. Then they're a little brighter, but you're still going to want some form of primary lighting with the system here. So first I'm going to place these on the lockers where they go and then adjust them into place with the arrow keys.
and then we can place them throughout the ship to uh, so that people will be able to find their way around with the it spawned in the wall people will be able to find their way around if the power goes out uh, but we're still going to want to put in some form of powered lighting to make things easier whenever the reactor is actually running. Alright, so if we hop back into lighting mode, we can see we've got enough of a glow to see by with the emergency lights. So we'll add a couple to the rest of the rooms, and then I'll come back and show you how to do powered lighting. Okay, so there's enough emergency lighting placed throughout the ship that it would be feasible to find your way around if the reactor goes out, but we still have nine power slots to put in actual lights. So we're going to look for a lamp, and you can pick whatever design. I'm going to go with this, and you can see if we place one and turn it on, it provides a fair amount of light. So you don't need that many of them to make the ship workable. So we'll put one there. That's two make this a priority be three four five six Seven, eight, and nine. And then I'm going to say we'll take this one from the junction area and put it down here instead. Alright, so those are our nine lights. Uh, you can, of course, add more junction boxes and expand this room to allow yourself to have more lights or place junction boxes down here. But for the sake of example, I'm just going to keep it to this. And then wiring up the lights is very simple. You just go to their wiring, grab power, and then put it on a junction box that has an empty slot. So I will take care of that on all these, and then I'll be back.